gonna work work on open guard, and we're gonna let's understand where open guard comes from, from self defense, and we're gonna do basic uh, exercise on the board open guard. Cool. But the reason why we are playing open guard will be either because he's doing a great job keeping his posture and everything, so I'm gonna open the guard on my turn, or because he's managing to create distance, and I'm gonna fill the gap. And the more distance we have, bigger is the gap we have to fill. Keep my legs closed won't allow me to do that. So we can understand this, it's starting with basic self-defense. So if you guys remember, on the self-defense, we wanted to break him down here. Then I have head here, engaging the leg, shoulder, head, all that thing that we are talking about, a lot about this. And then I feel, especially on the side of the head here, because his arm is trapped, he's going to open up a big spot. Oh, okay. We're going to go for a blow on the rib cage here. Oh. So as he's coming here, as I feel the gap, the space, I feel the gap. When I let go of the head, there is the opportunity for him to punch the other one. And we block here. So his arm, my arm with two hooks, my legs. This configuration here is really important. Now, realize that he's still putting pressure forward and he starts to try to punch. He's going to just ride with my horse. Now, look at this. Instead he pressure forward now, we realize this is not working. So he decides to go further. So I lost my connection here. So I have to fill this gap even more. Otherwise, he will come back and punch over the top here. So when this happens, this will happen. The internal part of my foot here, and my knee is going to go together there. Now he's going to try to come punching forward again, and I'm going to raise my hip, and as soon as I have the opportunity, break back, he close guard. So we are doing, the starting on number one, that's called number two, when I go with my shin on the bicep, number three, when I go with my knees on his chest. Okay, so the full drilling again. We are here. One, two. Right two times with him. Then he wants it up again. Beautiful. Try to touch your face. Bring him back. Two number one. Two number one. Any questions? Make sense why we open the guard? The goal was to fill the gap. He created a gap to punch, fill the gap. He created a bigger gap to punch. I feel the gap again. Good? Go. So, the person on top uh, behavior. One of the hardest things to train in self defense is to act as close as possible to the real situation to make the, the, the thing realistic. Otherwise, it won't work if you ever find yourself in a real situation. Uh, that's why Helio Gracie used to believe Jiu Jitsu should be done in private matches because he used to ask how come the other person is going to do the right reaction if he is not an instructor. Okay? Anyway, try to act with as close as you can from the real situation. What this means. So, let's say Tim is holding you here. I do this. Now, imagine somebody who wants to punch. He's probably going to be doing something like spreading his feet over exaggerated here. And then feel the pressure, try to get the hands and posture up again here to make the connection here. Look, internal part, the toes are free here. Then I try to punch here, try to, to get in there. Also realize the situation we are studying. Oh, but the guy can stand. And then here is what we do in the future, our number four. For now, the guy stay everything here. So I might come with my knee a little bit off the ground. Makes sense, but just enough to keep pressing forward. So try to act as close as you can from the real situation. So he can feel my weight, he can feel the pressure, and use the leverage to the defense. Oh, go. Open the guard in a situation without strike. So just a real quick uh, history. You guys watch the development of the, of the guard, kind of a follow up path. What is the first type of guard we learn in the fundamentals from? Rose. 
Then we learn basic open guard, then all the open guard variations, what includes spider, lasso, uh, butterfly, sit up guard, all the variations in, in, un, under the umbrella of open guard, then half guard. Now, to look at the history of the competitions, in the 80s it was a lot of close guard. Then it's natural, people start to evolve and start to, to play a better top game. And then on the 90s, we see a lot of open guard and open guard variation. Till you get to the 2000s, a lot of uh, half guard. Towards the 2010, a lot of those new stuff, the Volo, double guard pool. And now, I don't know if it's just me, but I have a feeling that we are going back to close guard. Last year on the IPJF Worlds, we saw a lot of beautiful close guard being played, okay? So it's natural that we also learn of the same way that the guard process happens. Make sense for advice? So look this, no striking now. <coughs> we're gonna do, first uh, uh, we're gonna set the open guard, a very basic one. From there, we're gonna do a little exercise to, to give the hip mobility. And then we're gonna go back to a, uh, side to side exercise to also give hip, give you hip mobility and understand what is the, the goal here with one sweep at the end. Cool? So look this. Still, I don't care if there is no striking, I'll break with him to this situation here. But he starts to manage to go up and he is doing a great job even though I'm not allowing him with the hands in the middle of my chest, he is still staying there. So if I allow him to keep this good posture with this big gap here, he's going to start to attack my guard. It will be really hard for me to create attack situations from here. I have to break his posture and go from there. You guys already know that, right? So we're going to do a very simple thing. Pay attention. All this is, is assuming that uh, during this first stage of our training today, he is staying on his knees. I'm going to hold this lead. <coughs> going to slide my head. And we have open guard here. Knees in front of my shoulders, in front of his shoulders. Feet monitoring the hip. Realize the word monitoring, not connecting. If I connect to the hip and he decides to sprawl, that's what's going to happen. Now if I'm monitoring the hip as he decides to sprawl, we stay. I, he stays behind my leg. Does that make sense? Everybody good to hear? Elbows touching the ground. Then he decides to go up, little extra. Then I'm gonna fill the gap again. One. Usually, just one is enough, but today for the, the, hip, the hip exercise you're gonna do, we're gonna do the second one. At this point, where is important? Elbows touching the mat, palms up. He must be feeling his, my feet going on his bicep this way. If I start to do something like this, I'm helping him big time. So he's going down. In a little bit, he's going to stand up, and that should be hard for him to go up. He must be carrying my weight. At this point here, we're going to do four hip skips. So my hip come off the ground, and I go one, come back. Make sure your elbows are touching the ground. And two, it's normal to get the elbow off the ground at this point. We are sideways. Go back, elbows touching the ground. Three, four. Everybody good to hear? Well, let's go again. Number one, but he's doing a very good job here. So I set my grips, hip escape, knees in front of the shoulder, monitoring the hip. I know where his hip is, but I'm not connecting. Go, he postured up more. I'm gonna go one, two, make sure my elbows are touching the ground. Then I go one. Two, three, four, and we start again. Any questions? Make sense? Let's go. We're gonna do a simplified version. With, uh, we're gonna do only one foot on the bicep, but it's exactly the same, like, same motion we just did. So look this. Close guard, he's doing a great job on the posture. So I'm gonna open the guard on my terms. A very common mistake. He starts to open my guard, and I resist, resist, resist. Okay, now I have to open up, it's too late. So learn how to identify, okay, he's doing good there. 
won't be, I won't be able to keep my guard closed for, for much longer. Before he does all the adjustments he needs, we are ready here. Then he decides to go up. I gonna no no just okay. uh, just the posture. So he's posturing up. On Wednesday class we deal when the guy come off the, the knees, okay? So I'm gonna go one, two. So I'm gonna keep this foot here to do the swift, okay? You're gonna do a spider guard basic simplified version of the foot. So we have this foot on the bicep going down, elbow on the ground, go. Most important thing to apply the swift, I'm gonna break the line between our hips. So you see, we are in line. And every time I have to reset, that's where I wanted to make my checkpoint. But now in order to apply the swift, I will break the line between us on my terms. What this means, if he try to move around, I will be always following him. I wanted to square up with him and everything. Now, if I wanted to attack him, I will break the line between us on my terms. So you see our hip line here? I can engage this foot here, the one on the hip. And this will be my first anchor. So hip up, big hip stick. So that was my anchor. Everybody good with that? Can you guys realize it's the same motion we just did? The only difference, my foot was on the bicep for the drill, now it's on the hip. From here now, I will start to use this one as an anchor. So I'm going to start to extend this leg here as I arch my back and come up on my elbow. You got to come up on the elbow because now I'm halfway up while you have to come on top. From here, slide my foot straight to the mouth and then we work from here. Okay, so one more time. We open the guard. So that's the starting point. He postured up. Step on the bicep. Make sure you feel that your head on the bicep. If you have this, probably won't work. You see elbow off the ground, no pressure on the bicep. Easy for him to deal with that. Here. Then this foot on the hip will be my anchor. Break the line between us. It's really important. Look, when I if I drop this foot, my heel is in line with his knee joint. If I do a short hip skate, this technique won't work. This technique follows exactly the same principle that we use on the scissor sweep that we learned on the fundamentals class. The same exactly principle. So big hip speed. This was my anchor. Drop this, that becomes the anchor. So I start to extend 45 degree there, engage my hip, arch my back, come up on my elbow, slide my foot, and establish my control. Any question? Everybody good? One more time. Faces are not <laughs> matching with the answer. <laughs> so go here one, escape, and establish your control. Good? Let's go.